is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All righty, there he is, Scott Pianowski, locked and loaded. And if you think Scott Pianowski has any trouble making money, well, check this out. The leaders so far in contract restructures, the Dolphins are at $48.99 million. The Saints, 48.96. The Jags, 45.59. Packers, 33.99. Chargers, number five at 28.75. And the Panthers, number six at 27.42. The Dolphins restructuring a lot to sign you, Mr. Pianowski. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to ask you for a loan soon, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what position I would play. They, they need somebody long snapper, maybe, or because um, the, the one thing I can do is catch the ball. We say I can't run away from anybody, but they don't need a receiver. I, I think Hill and Waddle got that position locked up pretty pretty good. But man, a lot a lot's happened in the NFL. It is just it's the one sport where it's a twelve month calendar, right? You can't get away from it. Free agency, this Lamar Jackson fiasco, Adam Thielen retired today. Uh, you know the draft. Oh, he isn't retired. Far away. I'm sorry, minute, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, he was cut by the by the Vikings. Oh, okay. He did not, he did not I was retire. Like, Holy shit, dude! I thought it was you. Like you threw me for a loop. Totally, there. totally misspoke. Uh, in, okay. in part because I was what I was doing is putting in in uh, on Twitter. I was looking at some of his ranks among undrafted receivers. He's top ten among undrafted receivers in catches, yards. He's third in touchdowns among undrafted receivers. I think he's fifth in uh, regular fantasy points, sixth in PPR. I may have that flip flopped. But uh, along with Rod Smith, Don Hudson, just one of the, the greatest um, undrafted receivers of all time. He will probably play a couple more years. But so I, I apologize sliding uh, Thielen there. But a guy, what, Manca Mankato State? They don't even call the college that anymore. It's called something else now. But um, a, a player who made himself. Nobody expected anything when he came to the NFL. But he, he's a self-made guy and always been one of my favorites. And, of course, this Jackson thing, you, you know, a friend of mine who's a casual NFL fan said to me a few days ago, he sent me a text. He said, what are the, the Giants spent how much money on Daniel Jones? Is he that good? And it just goes to show you that a quarterback in the NFL, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. The mm -hmm. Giants were screwed if they let Daniel Jones go, but they might be screwed by kind of overpaying him. And I feel like the Ravens are in that position with Lamar Jackson. I, I think they want to keep him. They don't want to give him a Deshaun Watson contract. I don't blame him. You know, I thought what the Ravens have offered Jackson was actually reasonable. So I, I kind of like what Baltimore, other than the fact that it may ruffle feathers, I think what they did makes a lot of sense. It's like, okay, if there's a better offer out there, go get it, and then we will react to it. And if there isn't a better offer out there, then maybe you'll see that our offer is actually pretty good. Um, it just, just shows you, you know, obviously Miami's in a weird place with Tua, right? Because his upside is he's a, he's a Pro Bowl guy. He's an MVP candidate. They went to the playoffs last year largely on his shoulders. But you don't know what the durability is going to be. So I, the NFL is always about the quarterback. And even the quarterbacks that we talk ourselves into, I, you know, the Jets right now, everybody's all excited to get Aaron Rodgers. You know, Aaron Rodgers didn't look that great last year. I know the Jets have better offensive pieces, but I, I don't know. I, I'm not afraid, uh, you know, looking from an AFC East standpoint, Rodgers, would he be better than Zach Wilson or Mike White? Yeah. But he's not, you're not getting MVP Aaron Rodgers, man. You're, you're getting like the 13th best quarterback in the league, the way I see it. Yeah, I, I don't think you're getting uh, – and I don't think you're getting a guy that's completely all in. I just think mm -hmm. he's kind of trying to finish out that $100 million. It's almost like that's quite I, – I feel that's going to be a, a you know a disaster when it's all said and done. And I don't know if you saw Emmanuel Acho. I thought he, had, he made a great point too. The problem for Lamar now too is, you know, Deshaun Watson was going to be traded. Somebody was going to get him in that fight for him. See here, what are you fighting for? What what are you you're negotiating for Baltimore? Because Baltimore at no point has said, "All right, we'll, we're part ways with them. We'll trade them. Go ahead. Somebody gives you the right deal." What? Well, no. Every time they've said, "We want him back," and so basically, why are teams going to negotiate with Lamar when all you're doing is creating a contract that Baltimore is going to say, "Okay, great, we'll take it." And that's it. It's got to be so ridiculous for them to say, yeah, no, we're out. We'll take the two first rounders. So really, if you're Atlanta or you're Washington or Carolina, if you really are in uh, in the market for a quarterback, that's not the one you go after because in the end, he's not being offered up to anybody at right. all. 
yeah, the NFL is all about leverage. Life is all about leverage, right? That's why when when you go to that job interview, it's it's cat and mouse game. You want the the other side to make an offer first, and they want you to say, well, what are your salary demands? What are your salary expectations? The whole goal is to go second. And poker, right? A huge part of poker is position, is acting last, is getting the most information you can, and then you make your choice. And unfortunately for the teams that may be interested in Jackson, they don't have any leverage because no matter what they want to offer him, you you make you make a crazy offer that blows everything out of the water. Okay, good. You just have them. You overpaid for them. And, and by the way, we'll take your two first round picks. Thank you very much. You make an under you know, you under offer him, and then the Ravens say, "Oh, that's great. We'll we'll scoop him back. Thank you for facilitating this for us." So teams don't want to be manipulated like that. Teams see that they don't have leverage in this situation, which is why I, I understand why Lamar's probably frustrated by it. I did think what the Ravens have offered. I think the Ravens have offered in good faith, though. Sometimes a lot, a lot of times in these situations, the the business side of it, the team side of it, will try to offer something that looks good that they can sell in public, but isn't really an in good faith offer. I think the Ravens have actually negotiated in good faith with Jackson. I, I don't think that's part of the problem. I'm with you there. By the way, Byron Jones has uh, apparently uh, tweeted or Instagrammed out that he has retired. Mm. Uh, so it looks like uh, the knee injury that he suffered, it's, it's too much for him to come back from. So uh, it looks like he is uh, he's calling it quits. Interesting. Yeah, it's the NFL, man. You know, um, these guys deserve every penny they make because a career can end at any point. Um, and whenever anybody gets out, when they still have a quality of life, you know, they can still live. You know, they've made some money and everything. I feel good about it. You know, um, sorry to hear that news, but I mean, it's it's the nature of the game. There's no getting away. I mean, they they've tried to legis- they tried to make the game as safe as they can. I just don't know what they can really do. You know, I, I, I don't know if there's anything you can do, actually, at this point. Uh, they've the way they listen in the end, I, I not not for anything, but I kind of was, you know, tripping with uh, Byron Jones a little bit because he was acting like, well, uh, don't take the pills and uh, this, that and uh, this this game will do damage to you. And it's like, yo, it's 2023. We already know that your body's going to be, you know you know, uh, hamburger meat when you're done with that game. That's kind of the trade. You know, if you play football, you are going to be sacrificing your body. It's kind of part of the game, unfortunately. But that's just the way. If you play hockey, it's the same way. When you retire, you're not going to – you're you're, you're going to be pretty creaky when you wake up in the morning, dude. It's a lot of sports. There's a, there's a concussion problem in soccer. You go back and read the Sports Illustrated article when Roger Staubach retired, back when we didn't know, when a concussion was he got his bell rung. And Staubach wanted to keep playing. He was still playing at a very high level. He was still a Pro Bowl player his final season, playoff player. But um, he, he said, "I've suffered like seven or eight concussions. I, I can't do this anymore. I, you know, I, I don't. I don't want to ruin the second half of my life." Yeah, I'm. I'm with you there. All right. Uh, you you look at uh, the Aaron Rodgers situation. Do you see him ending up in the Jets? I think so. I, I think the Green Bay. Rodgers thing just has to be a divorce now because Jordan Love showed enough and Rodgers is I mean, he's not an ideal teammate right I mean Rodgers is one of those guys that when he's playing an MVP level you deal with him being a pain in the ass and you live with it because he's one of the, you know it's like Barry Bonds was like that right I mean when when Barry Bonds was the best hitter in baseball people would live with this crap when he couldn't play the field anymore and he got into his 40s even though he was still somebody who would probably have a 400 obp just by standing at the plate even if he never swung the bat i mean he still had value but he wasn't worth it at the end when he wasn't the best player in baseball anymore and again the jets you know the jets come to him with open arms because they've had such bad quarterback play they, they lived through the darnell thing they lived through the zach wilson thing you know, Mike White is what he is. I mean, he's a good backup who can play effectively for a game or two, and then he got hurt himself. He got exposed. He's certainly not a long-term solution, and nobody thought he was. But they, the thing is, this team has such good offensive infrastructure, really defensive infrastructure too. This is a really good – if you ranked all the rosters in the NFL, 2 through 50, the Jets would do really well. The problem is the NFL is all about who your quarterback is first and foremost. And, again, they're, they're not getting – I know Rodgers won MVPs recently. I, I get it, but – he is not anywhere close to that guy. And, you know, for every Tom Brady who had a pretty good run in Tampa Bay or Joe Montana who had a decent run in Kansas City, you're much more likely to be 
Joe Namath on the Rams or Johnny Unitas on the Chargers or, you know, that type of thing. You know, Dan Marino's a final final game at Jacksonville, right? Would they lose 62 to 7 or something like right, that? Right, right. Yeah. The line, the line from Cocktail, everything ends badly or else it wouldn't end. I mean, I wouldn't say everything ends badly. Somebody Sometimes guys go out like John Elway did, but for the most part, it ends badly. It ended badly for Brett Favre. He was really good. Another guy, by the way, who went from the Packers to the Jets. Really good his second to last season. He was terrible his last year. Yeah, I'm with you there. All right. Um, we we look at the uh, at at uh, the Raiders situation. Where do they end up? What quarterback do they get, dude? God, I wish I knew. Uh, again, you're damned if you do. If you're damned if you don't, you know we gotta get rid of Derek Carr. He's the problem. Okay, well, you got rid of him. He's not your problem anymore. And Brady and Brady stayed retired. Brady stayed retired. I, I don't. Maybe they could be players in Garoppolo. <laughs> Pardon me. By, by the way, are, are you on the side <laughs> of calling McDaniel and and Greer liars since they've been for two months saying they're committed to Tua, but yet we keep having people say Brady's in play in Miami? Are you uh, are you on that bandwagon too? By the way, I think Brady's retired. I, I'm surprised because I think Brady could still play in the right situation. I thought he was a great fit for San Francisco. I think he'd be a great fit for Miami. He obviously likes the area. And there's he was interested in Miami before, so me, I'll say this: if Brady were to unretire again, first of all, nobody'd ever believe him. San Fran would have would have been the perfect one. You nailed, <laughs> nailed it. There. He would only come back for a perfect setup, which I think San Francisco is. I think Miami's really close, though. Yes, I do too. I I actually think Miami is close. Miami needs to make a couple of moves, uh, and and adding a Fangio I think was huge for sure. If they, it, for me, the bigger thing is Miami just needs some breaks this year where they don't suffer all the injuries that they suffered because they had so many injuries last year that that completely derailed their season more than anything else. But I think if you get back your nucleus, you add the defensive coordinator, and you're able to add like a key free agent or two, uh, I, I'm with you. I think Miami can actually win the division this year because I think Buffalo is going to take a step back because of Josh Allen's contract now becoming part of the mix and now they're not going to be able to keep everybody and this is part of success when you've been drafting well for a few years and now you've had to pay your quarterback well now now crap comes to you know to the top now and now you've got to pay the piper and i think that the the bills are about to take a step or two back and i think miami has a chance to take a step or two forward actually totally agree buffalo is going to be a very top heavy team and we saw it last year with their offense, right? Allen was very good most of the time. A couple of games where he lost his way, but for the most part, what we expected. And Stephon Diggs was what we expected. Any other Buffalo player you drafted for fantasy was a game of whack-a-mole. You know, Singletary would play well once a month. Dawson Knox would score a touchdown once in a while. Gabe Davis was a hot player after that four-touchdown game against Kansas City in the playoffs. He was a disappointment to the point that there's whispers that Buffalo just wants to get rid of Davis. They want to replace him anyway. But if you make you make a, any kind of interesting offer for Gabe Davis, they're going to trade him. I think they've accepted that he's just a a, a, a rotation player, but not somebody who can really play out on the outside all the time. So they need a fresh coat of paint in that offense. And as you said, the price of being good is you get priced out of you, – you have to decide who you can keep, and the players you keep are going to get at the high end of their salary range, and then you get rated in your depth. So you have a team – you know, like the, the Jets, the great thing about the Jets right now is they have so many young players who aren't really getting paid yet. And so they have a really, really deep team. And the Jets will have this problem in, in two or three years when these guys' right, rookie right. deals run out right. and they want to get paid and they have to say, well, who can we keep? And we'll pay top of the market for them. And who can't we keep? And we'll have to just lose those guys. To and Owato and Jalen Phillips. Mm -hmm. That's coming. That's coming. Buffalo's, you know, Buffalo, the windows are so short. And defensive windows are really short. I, I thought Buffalo had like a top five defense the last couple of years. I, they're going to have an ordinary defense next year because they're going to they're not going to have the same personnel. And we saw what happened this year when they had some injuries. They were just trying to lose that game to Miami. If Miami had any competent quarterback play, they win that playoff game. Obviously. Well, I, I think if the if the coach just gets to play in on the fourth and one, even with the third quarterback, they might have driven down that field to win that game, dude, because they were moving the ball. Mm -hmm. At that point. So, you know, that's uh, that's kind of the iffy one. All right, what do you got uh, going on at Yahoo so folks can check you out, my friend? A lot of fantasy baseball coverage as uh, we're in fantasy baseball season. And I'll be doing a lot of NCAA tournament coverage starting Monday. I'll give you sleepers. I'll give you busts. I'll give you some tips in filling out your brackets if you're in an NCAA basketball pool, which you should do. It's un-American not to do one. 
help you with that. And of course, the Yahoo Fantasy Football forecast keeps rolling along. Matt Harmon is the shepherd there. I'm a regular guest on it. He's doing a bunch of free agency stuff. He did a bunch of combine stuff. We'll obviously be all over the NFL draft. And shortly after the NFL draft, I don't know the exact date, but I would expect that's when Yahoo Fantasy Football would be open for business. And we'll be drafting in the spring. We'll be doing months of reps, man, getting you ready for the next fantasy season. Because, again, the NFL is a 12-month calendar. Amen to that. And we'll have uh, more pieces to that puzzle to answer now coming up with free agency in the draft. And that'll give us a, a clear fantasy picture for 2023. Follow him on Twitter at Scott underscore Pianowski. Catch his work there at Yahoo Sports. Scott, as always, my brother, appreciate you immensely. We will catch up next week, my friend. Great Thank to you. talk to you. If you hear a dog barking in the background, that's my, it's our puppy, Abby. She wanted to be on the show. So uh, Bring her Abby, on next Abby time, says bro. hello from Michigan. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta show off Abby next time, bro. I will. I will. All right. Great dog. All right. All right, Scotty. Have a good one, buddy. You got it, baby. There you go. Scott Pianowski, Yahoo Fantasy, baby. And Sports Grill, eight great locations. They just opened up the Doral location. It is awesome. It's about a mile, mile and a half, right down 87th Avenue, uh, just north of uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, golf course in Doral. And it is a beautiful, beautiful restaurant. Eight great locations. Don't forget, you can take the sauces home. Oh, yeah. And, of course, you got all the college basketball action going on. Great place to catch it is at Sports Grill. Go to sportsgrill.com so you can find the nearest location to you. Sports Grill, Miami Dolphins, and NFL Report with Scott Pianowski. (laughs) 